Once upon a time, there was a young girl who lived with her mother in a cottage near the edge of a forest. And this young girl had a grandmother who lived deep in the forest. And she loved her grandmother. And one day she learned that her grandmother was ill. So she decided to go visit her. So she gathered some food and some wine into a basket, wrapped herself in the red cloak her grandmother had made for her, and she started down the path to grandmother's house. But just before she got to the forest, her mother called to her this warning. Don't stray from the path. We encounter pathways like this in literature so frequently that we rarely take time to stop and think about them. And this is because we intuitively recognize the paths as symbolic. So the path that Little Red Riding Hood walks symbolizes her obedience, her goodness, her virtue. To stray from the path would symbolize disobedience, even wickedness. Similarly, in our own lives, we encounter pathways so frequently, we rarely take time to stop and think about them. And again, it's because we intuitively recognize the paths as symbolic. And we make these connections between the pathways of literature and the pathways of life naturally and effortlessly. Because as Northrop Fry says, imagination is the power constructing possible models of human experience. So a story like Little Red Riding Hood is a model of our everyday, some part of what it is and some part of what it could be. So we talk about pathways in business, pathways in education, pathways in life generally. If someone makes a decision we approve of, we say, she is on a good path. If someone makes a decision we disapprove of, we say, he has lost his way or he has gone astray. But what we call a path is really just a series of discrete choices that only appears as a pathway in retrospect. So if someone commits an atrocity, we play a game of connect the dots to try to figure out where it all went wrong, which is just another way of asking, where did this individual stray from the path? Now there's two problems with this way of thinking. The first is it significantly limits your individual agency to a single choice, to walk the path you're on or not to walk it. The second is it assumes you should always walk the path. So the young girl slips beneath the shade of the trees and is lost to her mother's sight. She enters a bigger world, a world she's not fully prepared to deal with. And almost immediately, she's confronted by the silver-tongued wolf. Where are you going, little girl? He asks. To Granny's, the first house in the village at the center of the forest, she innocently replies. And the two make a wager that the wolf can arrive at Grandmother's house ahead of Little Red Riding Hood by leaving the path, cutting through the trees. She chooses to walk the path she's on. The wolf gains an advantage by his decision to stray from the path, which also marks him as wicked. And these lessons that we learn by making connections between literature and life have far-reaching implications. And they are probably the reason we engage in storytelling. As a matter of fact, Harold Bloom says we read to prepare ourselves for death. This is what the story of Little Red Riding Hood represents to us. We anticipate that if the girl steps off the path, she'll be eaten by the wolf. But if she sticks to the path, she'll arrive safely at grandmother's house. Because to stay the path is always good. So if the general consequence of seeing pathways in literature as symbolic is that we see pathways in life as symbolic. The particular hazard is that we begin to participate in this idea that path following can save us from death.
Well, invariably, the wolf arrives at grandmother's house well ahead of Little Red Riding Hood, who trudges along the narrow winding path. He devours the old woman and the young girl in turn, then cruelly naps in Granny's bed. Occasionally, a huntsman will come along, free the victims. But that's after the fact. It's irrelevant to our discussion about path following. What got Little Red into trouble wasn't the path she followed. It was her decision to continue walking that path. Remember, Little Red Riding Hood was on a mission to Grandmother's house. Her goal was within reach. She simply had to follow the path to arrive at her destination. The problem is that the wolf was waiting for her. The path led her directly into his gaping maw. So what we see at the beginning of the story is a prohibition against death. Don't stray from the path actually have just been bad advice from a well-meaning mother who never imagined she had set her daughter on such a dangerous road. And again, this is because she could only see the symbolic path. If Red or her mother or we could see the literal path in addition to the symbolic path, it would free Red to stray from the path arrive at grandmother's house ahead of the wolf, sparing her the stigma of wickedness, even the pains of death. We must learn to distinguish the path from the choice. Don't stray from the path and you will always arrive at your destination. Whether or not death awaits you at the end is a separate matter. But this is why it's so important that you know the path you walk and be prepared to stray from that path. Thank you. <laughs>